Well, um, well, Dr. Gattis, so this, uh, this is your, is this your legacy? That's supposed to be my legacy, yeah. We're real pleased with it, and uh, we we're surprised that this ha happened. I'm a dropout. I dropped out of junior high school. Uh, I was 17 years old when I dropped out <clears throat> because I had attended already 11 different schools, and I was already in the ninth grade, 17 years old, and I knew that, that I... Uh, I didn't have a future. I was born in a little place called New Bromfields, Texas, sometime back, and that's where I started my first schooling. I was 10 years old, didn't speak a word of English, and I went to a school called Shubensville Mexican School. It was a one-room house, schoolhouse. Had two houses, one for the girls and one for the boys. We had a pot belly stove in the middle of the room and a big bucket of water with one dipper where everybody could drink out of the dipper. My mother used to always say, you know, that I see lo quiso Dios. God intended to be this way. Or she would say, la pobreza Dios la amó. God loved the poor. So it meant that it was okay for me to be poor because God loved it. I remember picking cotton and looking at those long rows of, of, of cotton. And I would think to myself, you know, there's got to be a better way of making a living. So the war came along, World War II came along, <clears throat> and that's when I joined the Marine Corps. And again, I owe a lot to the Marine Corps because it did open my eyes to other people that were more, much better educated than myself. <clears throat> and I promised myself that if I ever got back, that I would not only finish high school, but I would go on to college. It was in the island of, of Tinian. We had gone to Saipan and in Tinian, and in the islands of Tinian, I remember that I was right in the middle of two different groups. One group over here were kids like myself that were dropouts, and they were all talking about getting drunk, going out with broads, and they're just having a good time. This other group on the other foxhole were young people that were high school graduates, they were college graduates, and they were talking about, I remember very distinctly, they were talking about the Bolsheviks. When I heard that, I thought they were saying something bad. But later I found out they were talking about the Russian government. And right there and then, I made up my mind to which group do I really want to belong to. When we were fighting in, in the South Pacific, we found out, or they found out, that capturing Japanese prisoners, we could not get information from them right away. They, we had to send them way back to division to get interrogated, and by that time, it was too late. So they decided, somebody decided that we ought to have somebody from the, in the front lines <clears throat> to go to Japanese language school and, and, and emerge ourselves in, in the Japanese language program. What helped me a great deal was that I spoke Spanish. The vowel system the, the, is very similar to Spanish. So I guess they chose me to go because I could speak Spanish. And I picked up the language quite well. I wish I could have picked it up even more. But well, you know, we, you know, we were taught uh, 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 in the Marine Corps that these people were all bad that they would stab you in the back, they were treacherous, they were mean, uh, they, they were not really that human. When I learned the language and I learned and I spoke to these people, I found them to be very, very human, very warm, very cordial, and that changed my perspective of how I had felt before because, again, in those days, you know, we were taught like the old Westerns, 
so a theme of saying oh, the only good Indian is a dead Indian. Well, we were taught that the only good Jap was a dead Jap. But, you know, again, understanding their culture, understanding the language, changed my, my feeling and my perception of these people a great deal. So I came back to Corpus Christi, which was my hometown at the time, and I enrolled at the high school because I had not finished, I hadn't even finished junior high. And then we learned, I learned there that there was a program called a GED program that I could enroll. And within three months I could, if I passed the test, that I could get a GED that would get me ready to go on to college. But I went on to St. Mary's University in San Antonio. And I needed two semesters to graduate from St. Mary's when I was called back to Korea. So I went to Korea, I dropped out of St. Mary's University, went to Korea, came back, re-enrolled at St. Mary's University, and got my, a BA degree, began teaching in San Antonio, Texas. I taught at Edgewood Elementary School. It was predominantly Mexican-American kids. I had 44 youngsters in my class. The youngest was, seven, was 11 years old, and the oldest, I had three 17-year-old kids in, in my class. During that time, I also enrolled at our later uni Lake University to work on my master's program. So I worked on my master's program, got my master's degree. Right before I, I, I got my master's degree, I, I got married. Going about halfway, I had about 15 hours towards my, my PhD program when an opportunity came to go to Houston, Texas to be an area superintendent. 1971, the Houston Independent School District decentralized where they wanted six area superintendents and they each one had an area of about 40,000 students and about 37 schools. So I commuted from Houston, Texas to Austin for three years, taking a Wednesday night course or sometimes a Saturday course, working full time as an area superintendent, and eventually, finally, with the help of my chairman, Dr. Horn, in 1976, I was privileged to get my PhD in curriculum and instruction. <laughs> 